Man, this has to be the weirdest issue, combination of issues I've had since owning this truck. I don't even know what to say, but I'm going to tell the story. I already kind of spilled the beans a bit in another video. Let's get into it. If you've been on my channel before, you know, one of the things I've talked about is this DPF regeneration frequency code. If you're new, basically I have a truck with 200,000 miles that has the DPF or the diesel particulate filter that catches all the soot and it has to burn that soot off. So in order to do that, it injects fuel and basically starts a fire and a controlled fire. <laughs> and uh, I kept getting these codes when I got fuel that burned more sooty because it was like the DPF couldn't handle the soot load. And so I was really worried that I was going to have to spend the $8,000 to replace the DPF. Well, Fast forward from when I first got the P2459 to about a week ago, and I had unplugged my truck's battery to add a different cold air intake and also to add some power deployable running boards from Boost Auto. And uh, when I plugged the battery back in, I started getting codes. I got a fuel trim code, I got an EGR flow code, I got a crankshaft timing code. I The truck also would not auto regen anymore. So I'd be driving on the highway, it would say exhaust filter full, then it would say exhaust filter overloaded, and I would have to pull over to the side and complete a manual regen using Forescan. So I found that if I reset the PCM, it would be okay for a bit, and then it would keep doing codes. So I was like doing this on a trip. I was driving from Colorado to New Hampshire and back and planning to do a little bit of hauling while I was out that way and was just dealing with these codes, which again, dealing with any sort of automotive related issue while you're on a long trip is just not what you want to do. And so I called Power Stroke Tech Talk with A-Rod and I had called Bearded Ford Tech and then I even called a dealership in Kansas because I was getting these codes as I was driving through. Both A-Rod and Bearded Ford Tech, we couldn't quite figure it out because you know there were just all these random codes. I was talking to the Ford dealer and I think it was the service writer, whoever was on duty, but I, I kind of told him what was going on. And then I told him that I had replaced the air intake. And he's like, all right, well, is it possible that you contaminated your mass airflow sensor. And I was floored because I was like, I haven't even thought about that sensor. I mean, I, I haven't bothered to replace it. It's 200,000 mile old sensor. So I'm like, wow, probably need to take that out. Should try to replace that. Went to an O'Reilly's in Kansas in like Abilene off of I-70. Thankfully they had a, you know, it wasn't Motocraft, but it was off-brand uh, mass airflow sensor. I replaced it, codes are gone truck runs great. I don't know what to say. And on the way back through the Midwest where I normally would get regen frequency codes, no codes. Truck is fine. I've been getting this P2459 regen code since last August. And I replaced the DPF pressure sensor that seemed to help but then I would still get the code off and on. So I still need to probably do a couple more laps through the Midwest and buy lower quality fuel to see. But my hunch for all of this, for the weirdest issue I've had with my truck is that when I started getting the DPF regen frequency code, my mass airflow sensor had 185,000 miles on it. When I pulled it out, it was the original Motorcraft sensor. And so my hunch is, and this is a hunch, I'm not saying this is what's happening. I'm just sharing this in case you've unplugged your battery and then you start getting weird codes because it's just, in, it's anxiety provoking and it's not fun. And so my hunch is when I unplugged the PCM, to do the running boards and plugged it back in, the computer realized that my mass airflow sensor was bad. And so that was when it threw the fuel trim code. Now that particular fuel trim code, hold on, I took a picture and I'll put it up here too, just if you're curious. So it was a fuel trim bank one, it was a P0170. 
Now, I, when I look that up, typically can mean a couple things. It's like, you know, air filter contamination or like fuel contamination or, but like the air box was the main thing. But I had just switched to a Banks Ram Air from an AFE. And I'm like, Banks is one of the most, if not the most reputable aftermarket company for modifications in the world for diesels. So it, the Banks Ram Air is not causing this issue. And I already had a cold air intake. The truck made a ton of power with the mass airflow sensor that was in there. So it means that when I swapped the air box, I either contaminated the sensor or I like jiggled it enough that it broke. The service writer at the dealer in Kansas was saying that I guess the sensors are really sensitive. And so maybe I just wasn't being careful when I took it out. Like when I set it down, it got like dust in it or a fleck of grass or I don't even know. The other option is that the sensor was bad all along and that's why I was getting the P2459. And when I unplugged the battery and plugged it back in, it reset the PCM and the PCM was like, oh, that sensor's bad because it was trying to relearn the values and it couldn't relearn the values because the sensor was bad. So it's almost like the computer, the reset caused it to realize the mass airflow sensor was bad, even though the code for the regen frequency had been kind of trying to tell me that since last summer. Oh, wild. I don't know what else to say. Absolutely unreal that it was causing all that issues, but it makes sense because if the engine can't get a read on how much air is being pulled in, then it can't make all the other decisions. It can't determine how much exhaust gas to throw to flow through the EGR. It can't do the crankshaft timing. And then on top of that, it probably is not going to get the air fuel mixture correct. So it's going to burn sooty, especially when you put lower quality fuel in. So if my truck was burning sooty this whole time, then it was because the mass airflow sensor was causing it, not because the DPF was actually in a bad, bad shape, which would like my dyno test where I made all that power would also point to this. It's just, I've never heard of a truck. Like you unplug the battery, plug it back in and it freaks out at you, you know, because it's, it's like, it realizes like it woke it up and it was like, Oh, there's a bunch of shit wrong with your truck or with your engine. Oh, <coughs> It's honestly kind of comical. I mean, and again, this is, it's something stupid that like, you know, even if you didn't have emissions on your truck, you're still going to have to deal with this. Now the, the difference is you wouldn't be getting like regen codes. You'd probably get fuel trim and stuff, or you, maybe you'd notice that your truck was running sooty. But I think from now on, like when I hit 150 K since I replaced the sensor. So I did this mass airflow sensor at 150. Um, or at, sorry, 200, probably overdue. I did my manifold absolute pressure sensor at like 180. I think I'm just going to start doing both those sensors at every 150,000. And yeah, because I mean, at that point, like the truck had 200,000 on it. It's a 2019. So it's what? It's six years old, almost six years old. And yeah, I just, that stuff needs replaced, but they don't give you a replacement interval for that because it's a sensor and it's like, you don't know because the computer is supposed to tell you, but what do you do if the computer doesn't tell you? Cause it definitely didn't tell me, or at least it told me, but it was after a very long time when I probably should have replaced it a long time ago. I am going to be continuing to monitor this on the channel, but like I said, drove 2,500 miles back from New Hampshire in kind of a roundabout way down to Pennsylvania, did some other stuff, came all the way back out to Colorado and I did not get a regen frequency code. And the DPF was back to going over 500 miles on like a region. Like my filter wasn't filling up anymore. And Ford has it hard coded to region every 500 miles. So like it would be at like 35%. And then it would regen down from 35% because it wasn't filled up. So, I mean, if I had completely turned it off, probably could have gone 800 miles on the Midwestern fuel. Anywho, 
thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time here on Power Stroke Maintenance. Cheers.